Well, today in the Batman garage, well, I guess Batman driveway, but uh, we've got a 99 ML. Um, it's got a little bit of a suspension issue, and I'll show you that in just a second. I'm gonna get the uh, both left side wheels up in the air, and I'll show you what's going on. All right, so got a little bit of funky tire wear. Uh, nothing crazy, crazy bad, but um, I did a quick once-over inspection on it and uh, quickly found out that the tie rods uh, were in pretty sad shape. So I'm going to show you what I'm seeing on the outside and then I'll show you what I'm seeing on the inside. So on the outside, got quite a bit of play there right up in here in this ball joint on this control arm uh, which is the toe adjusting control arm um, there we go quite a bit of play there and again any play is bad play uh, and then similar story up front actually I think it's worse in the front but So that is actually with the dry, or passenger side still on the ground. There's still quite a bit of play here. My trick here is going to be that this uh, eccentric up here is what adjusts my toe. So what I want to do is get it back as close as possible to the uh, original mark, original point. So what I'm going to do is uh, just take a paint pen. It could be a Sharpie. be uh, any number of things but what I want to do is just draw a line like that and uh, that will allow me to take the bolt out take the control arm out put the bolt back in and get it right back lined up where we had it so I'm gonna give it a second to let the paint dry and then we'll pull this arm out real quick so I got my control arm pulled out uh, wasn't too bad. Uh, one thing I did differently was from underneath kind of hammer up, uh, get it to come out of the pocket, and then it just basically fell out into my lap. So we'll get the new one opened up and installed real quick. The particular control arm came with new uh, locking nuts for the outer end and for the bolt side so we'll get those put on real quick and then we'll be ready to uh, tighten everything down now the last step is probably the most important one and uh, honestly there's a lot of uh, auto mechanics out there that don't do this so um, this is what you need to do and a lot of techs are lazy so um, when you, whenever you have a bushing in a control arm and you you have the arm at full droop down, right? You tighten down the bolt, the bushing and then you bring the car up to ride height and see how my, my wrist didn't move because the bushing didn't want to flex like that. So you end up over tor or, you know overclocking the bushing essentially and you'll have premature bushing failure as a result. So what you need to do is snug down the bolt, not tight, just snug it down a little bit so it's in the right position. Then you wanna put the weight up on the car and then tighten down your bushing. So what I have now is my four jacks in place. I have the four jack pushing on the ball joint. This corner of the car is in the air. My jack stand is loose. So I know I have full weight on this corner. And then what I'll do is reach in there and tighten up that, uh, tighten up the control arm bolt. I'm still keeping the jacks underneath there for safety. Um, and I'm going to try not to be completely underneath the car. So I've gotten the control arm tightened up just now. And my witness mark, my paint mark, should be uh, right where it was when it came off. So we did good on that. And then we'll get ready to 
we're ready now to drop out the floor jack and put the wheel back on. I'm doing the front now and uh, just looked at it a little more closely and it actually appears like, I mean, I, I still have a boot failure and I'm sure they're still playing the ball joint itself or the tie rod end, but it actually looks like the nut is maybe a little bit loose in the shaft. Um, so if I push and pull on it, you can actually see the, the shaft itself moving inside the knuckle so uh, long story short is this side was hit in a collision so I'm hoping that the uh, the knuckle itself isn't damaged internally I'm hoping just that uh, the stud part of the ball joint is maybe stretched a little bit as a result of the impact so we'll find out in just a minute once we get this off well this is a good first start um, obviously not comforting, um, but it's at least encouraging that maybe the the, uh, the knuckle or spindle, whatever you want to call it, is actually going to be okay. So I have not, uh, all I did was squeeze on it a little bit with my hand, but it's, I mean, look, I'm not even putting any pressure on it. One-handed, and I can loosen that nut up. He's definitely got some issues here. I did not have to break this thing loose at all. Um, so... We'll get this thing off completely and uh, do a little more, a little more digging. And but I'm sure it's just loose, and that's all it was. Well, the customer lucked out on this one. Uh, I got the new tie rod in. I got it as tight as I can get it, and uh, all my play is gone. So we we were able to get a full seat on that on the uh, tapered part of the stud. So luckily, knuckle doesn't have to be replaced. So that's good. It'll save some money on that. Um, also noticed while I was in here, um, so this upper control arm got replaced uh, shortly after the accident. Uh, the ball joint here failed um, as a result of the impact. Um, noticed that the this is the brake sensor and this is the ABS sensor um, have some significant wire damage to them. It looks like they were kind of rubbing in here and maybe also had tire rubbing it too maybe. Um, so we're going to address that. That was not something we expected to see. And we'll get this fixed so this doesn't become a bigger issue. All it is is a, just a zip tie that's supposed to index into these little nubs on the uh, bottom of the control arm there. So um, what I did was taped up the individual wires. I, I don't typically like doing actual wiring repair, uh, cutting and splicing unless I is necessary. Um, the strands themselves looked okay. They were I'll, I mean, they were dirty, but they looked okay overall. Um, so I think we're going to just repair the outside insulation for now. And then uh, I put a, there's a piece of this uh, kind of soft-sided uh, jacketing material that I put on the outside of the ABS wire uh, just to give it a little bit more structure, a little more support to it. Um, so that way it's not just electrical tape holding a thing together. That was a... That was a crucial catch. So what could have happened is uh, while you were doing a panic stop, then uh, it would have basically had uh, ABS failure and you still would have been able to stop from hydraulic brakes, but you wouldn't have that pulsating ABS, um, which is what's necessary to keep the car um, from skidding. Luckily we caught it in time. Um, so the same thing is true for my tie rod had that completely failed off you would have lost all ability to steer the vehicle and uh, this wheel would have immediately turned all the way to the left once that once that tie rod falls out so it would have been darting off the road to the left that's my little humble lesson for the day is after getting in a collision make sure you get your vehicle inspected from a qualified certified uh, mechanic or technician and um, don't just assume that everything's fine because you may have hidden damages. Now it's possible that the shop that did that uh, upper control arm maybe loosened that uh, tie rod and forgot to tighten it up. It's also possible that it loosened up a little bit as a result of the wreck and was not fully inspected. So that's, that's my uh, PSA for the day is get your car inspected after it's been impacted, especially if it's been in imp impacted to the wheels and tires. So stay tuned. We'll see you next time.